Hey gang, it's me, Flower Gothic. I'm recovering, as of now, from my 2010 trilogy because that was a very ambitious project. More so than anything I have ever really done. So I wanted to do something simple yet personal this month. And this is the first time I'm going to be publicly open about this. I mean, I've been open before about my mental health and my mental illnesses, but I guess there's more to the story. For a period in my adolescence, I experienced a series of hallucinations and delusions that worsened due to my time in middle school, or junior high school, secondary school, whatever, whatever you call it in your country. <laughs> To give you all some context, in middle school, I was considered a creepy person. I frequently stalked people who I admired and thought were cool and with it. I was quite a loner who was in the climax of her weeaboo days, but this Everything that I'm about to say is what I was going through in my head at that time. But let me take you back to the beginning so I can tell y'all what happened that initially started my deteriorating mental state. The summer before fifth grade, I discovered Duck Dodgers and Lunatics Unleashed. And as I've said before, I fell in love with them. And the crossover fanfiction I read about them, Prince of Mars, also inspired me, as I wanted to be a child of the Martian Queen too. And the day before I left for my first international trip to Cancun, Mexico, I heard a voice in my head for the first time. It was, it was Queen Tyranny. Oddly enough, I guess I realized that I was the only one who heard her, so I almost always communicated with her in my head through my thoughts. It started innocently enough with her being the friend I always wanted, especially since I was, well, I've always been kind of an eccentric person. <laughs> but I also had like pretty severe anxiety as a child, so I didn't have very many real friends. But soon enough, the delusions came. I legitimately thought that I was the long lost daughter of the queen, Madison Losette, and I guess Losette was the name of the noble house or something? I don't know. I legit wrote a diary detailing a lot of these delusions. Sadly, it's been lost to the times, but I would write again and again and again about how someday I'll be able to go to 24th and a half century Mars so I can be the Martian crown princess. And I distinctly remember showing one of those diaries to someone while on a trip with my Girl Scout troop to Great Wolf Lodge. And they were very confused by the first few pages, like, who's the Martian Queen? Why are you writing all this deluded shit? And I ended up just snatching it from their hands and never showing my diaries to anyone ever again. I'm pathetic. But I also thought like these random trinkets would be my keys to go to Mars to be with my true mother or that tyranny in my head told me something about my life that I would write about in my self-insert fanfiction. Oh yeah, the self-insert fanfiction. So I thought those were things that were going to really happen to me when I ended up going to Mars and I thought that a childhood friend of mine, whom I will not name to protect his privacy, 
was my long lost twin brother, Niall Lucet, and that we would go together once we were 12 to Mars and live out the rest of our days fighting monsters and doing other things. I don't 100% remember because it was so long ago. <laughs> I do remember I used my real name in that fanfiction as well as the boy in question's real name, or at least his real first name. And as I've said, I didn't have too many friends in elementary school. Sure, I had people I could talk to and be friendly with, but I knew that I could never tell anyone about what I believed because A, I was eccentric enough to be into things that other fifth graders were not into, like a very obscure Japanese visual novel that ultimately ended up starting my weeaboo phase and the aforementioned Duck Dodgers and Lunatics Unleashed. Though I did tell one person when I was at like camp who told her mom, who told my dad, who I lied to in order to get out of trouble. From what I said, I think I was talking about gaining self-awareness on who we really were and who we're meant to be as people. It was very cultish thinking back on it, like, Oh, you've got to let a cartoon character in your head and they'll save you, save you from this horrible, closed off mind of yours. It was, it was not a healthy mindset to be in. Yeah, it was a fucking mess, but I was still a good student. I was mostly straight A's and I never particularly got into trouble. Once I discovered Kingdom Hearts, I considered myself the reincarnation of Naminé, then Zeon, then Larxene, but I never really extended on that world in my head until middle school happened. I had a difficult time adjusting in middle school. I grew detached from my elementary school friends, the closest thing I had friends, <laughs> and having a shit ton of new responsibilities and homework to keep up with and classes just stressed me out. As a result, I made my first ever um, C on a progress report, and I would frequently miss assignments, I would, I would just lie to my parents in order to try and get out of trouble from missing assignments. Which they caught on to really, really quickly, obviously, because I was a shitty liar. <laughs> and this caused somewhat of a downward spiral for me. As I've said in another video, I wasn't particularly popular in middle school because I looked different, I was taller, had a boyish figure, and, as I mentioned in this very video, stalked people that I admired. I ended up making a fantasy version of my life to cope with that, where I was popular with tyranny by my side, and I had tons of friends, and I was on the way to becoming a successful YouTuber via my Kingdom Hearts music videos. I clung on to that belief as tightly as possible, which got me branded the weird girl by most of the school. And yeah, I was a weird kid, but I was so deep in my own mental state that I thought everyone else was weird and that I was the only person who was fully awakened. There was one kid that I grew particularly fond of. Since he shares a name with someone I've already mentioned in this channel, we'll call him uh, 
Gregory. Gregory will work. We'll call him Gregory. Gregory was in my grade, and he was, to be honest, kind of cute in middle school. <laughs> he had that, like, I don't know. I don't know what I saw in him. Why did I think he was cute? <laughs> I have weird tastes. <laughs> And I guess I still do. But... He didn't go to elementary school with me. I met him in middle school, and... In 6th and 7th grade, we were relatively friendly with each other. Not friends, but... If we were, like, forced to, you know, do a group project together, neither of us would complain. But soon enough, I grew, well, the closest you could have to feelings in middle school for him. And being a person with no sense of boundaries because I was wrapped in my own little world, I would just stare at him. I would just try and like stalk him on social media because I thought, oh my god, he's so cute. I want to get to know him more. And of course he picked up on that and was insanely creeped out by me. <laughs> but I was so deep in my head at this time that I didn't even realize what I was doing was absolutely disturbing and something no one should ever do under any circumstance and Gregory if you happen to be watching this which I doubt <laughs> I'm I'm sorry I'm sorry even though I was in my own little world there was no excuse for my actions and Clinking to my beliefs sent me further down my delusions, to the point where I sincerely believed I was the reincarnation of a long-lost princess who was the somebody of Larxene. I believe her name was Relena. I know that the canon name is Elrena, but whatever. This was before Kingdom Hearts 3 was released. <laughs> Anyway, those beliefs alienated more people. And that ended up sending me deeper, which alienated more people, which sent me deeper. You get the picture. And there were people who wanted to hang out with me, probably out of pity. I'm not sure if it was out of sincerity or pity. I don't know. I don't care at this point. But all I know is that I rejected them because I was too deep in my head to realize that they wanted my friendship. That I was just... I thought they were trying to take advantage of me, like... Like... That group of girls. There was a group of girls in 7th grade who wanted to hang out with me and were very relentless about it. We'll call them... Um, Cyanna, Magda, Ellie, and Louise. Yeah, that'll work. Cyanna, Magda, Ellie, and Louise were normal by my middle school standards. They wore skirts and tongs. They had iPhones. iPhones. Ignore that timer, that's for my laundry. And they all had accounts on a hot new trend in my school, Instagram. And all this happened almost 10 years ago, so misremembering is inevitable. Please bear with me. Cyanna, Magda, and Ellie were the most relentless in trying to make me their friend. Staying with me at lunch against my wishes most of the time. Probably all at the time, but... and harassing me about some controversial things I said in 2012 that have since been erased from the internet. Like that one of the PE coaches at the time was a short, mean asshole. 
I rejected all of them except Louise because she was nicer to me. And I snubbed them despite my disinterest in them. They... I'm not sure whether they were genuine in their intentions or not at this point. Maybe they were. Maybe they did see some potential in me to become one of them. But one thing that makes me doubt that was that they genuinely believed a rumor about me that started at around the same time. You see, in the second half of seventh grade, people thought I had a crush on the popular class clown named Larry. Now, this started innocently enough as kind of a joke and that we were an official couple, which we were not, neither of us were particularly interested in each other as far as I know, but it ended up warping into a full-fledged rumor that I had some kind of unrequited love for Larry and that I thought we were soulmates or something. I don't know. I kept denying it because it was not true. <laughs> but these people, Magda, Cyana, and Ellie included, continued to spread that rumor and thought, oh my god, she has a crush on Larry. She wants to date Larry. She loves him so much. And there was another trend at the time. Ask .fm, which no one uses anymore. This makes me old. <laughs> and I remember making one because I thought it looked cool and I wanted cool kid questions, but then everyone started asking about the rumor. Meanwhile, the world in my head grew and grew as I grew more and more detached from reality. I began to believe in something quite similar to um, Sonichu Girl's world, where there were multiple dimensions, one where all the fictional characters were, and that I was one of the few who could travel between dimensions, and it was legitimately scary. At around this time, my um, phone and computer privileges were revoked for um, all of the line about school work I did. So I didn't have I didn't have much of a creative output except for the journals and art and limited other things. But when you're alone in your thoughts like that and you don't have anywhere else to turn to. You you start to you start to push yourself more and more into your fantasies, and that's exactly what I did. I remember at around springtime in the journal, I brought in a character that was basically the Martian Queen, but an actual human being who I went to, who I claimed I went to school with, because that journal in question was towards another person that I had kind of an obsession with, but we'll get to that person another day. And I guess I could, I found that as the only way to justify to him that I had an imaginary friend because I couldn't find a way to explain my hallucinations to anyone else. And I was more of a violent person at the time too. I remember legitimately like pinning someone, attempting to pin someone down, the down on the ground when they tried to lead the class into singing happy birthday for me. Two days after my 13th birthday, but I never liked the birthday song, nor do I ever like being sung to, especially if it's the birthday song. But I would not like physically attack someone who sang to me.
me <laughs> at this day and age. I can't remember any other time where I was intentionally violent, but I did threaten to hurt people. And yeah, I probably should have seen a psychologist at this point, but I was so deep in my head that I didn't even know how to cry for help. In fact, I probably would have been lost forever in this world, were it not for. Despite my continuous roasting of Aaron in this channel, my first relationship by dating Aaron snapped me back to reality. And recently, I realized why. Not because I loved him, but because he was one of the few people to have treated me with decency. That I talked to regularly. When I started to date Aaron, I didn't have a need for a fantasy world anymore. I had friends and a boyfriend and that regrounded me. I had people to lie. I had people to lie back on, real people, and Aaron was the anchor that pulled me back to the real world. And I guess I'll be forever grateful for that. <laughs> And the Larry rumors died because of the dating, too, as there was physical proof that I was in a relationship with Aaron, that I could show people. They couldn't believe that I actually was able to get a boyfriend, but there was proof. So there was nothing they could do to, like, dispute it. <laughs> and, and the bullying and other rumors about me decreased, but never truly went away until I went to high school. But when high school started, I soon drifted away from my middle school memories and made new friends and reconnected with older friends and my delusions and hallucinations died with that. And sure, I might, and, and sure, I relapse occasionally, mostly when I'm under like severe psychological stress, but... As of now, I consider myself perf pretty, pretty healthy mentally. And looking back, I think the treatment I got in middle school was what caused the peak of my mental instability. Thanks to that feedback loop that pushed me further down the rabbit hole. Sure, in fifth grade, I wasn't too well to begin with, but a new environment made everything worse. Just, I'm glad I was able to get out of there before there was any long-term damage.